Hey, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to touch on e-commerce platforms, templating and how it how this kind of ties in with theme development. So it's a natural progression actually from the last video. Now, WordPress, it doesn't have the razzmatazz of things like React and Vue and Angular. You know, when you're learning web development, there's a tendency to look upon WordPress as the easy solutions, kind of like a bike with stabilizers. But you can do very serious web development with WordPress, not that I've done it personally, but I know that there's another level. WordPress now has an API. Templating can get pretty complicated actually when you go deep into it. So that being said though, I feel like it's prepared me. I feel like my years of experience in WordPress serves me as a launch pad to do other things. And why do I say that? And what does e-commerce have to do with this? Well, a few e-commerce projects came my way this year. One in particular though, was with Big Commerce. And that's uh, another e-commerce platform. I'd never heard of it. While we're on the topic though, let's look at some of the others. Starting with WooCommerce, it's a WordPress plugin and that's the platform that I was most familiar with. We've also got Shopify. You most probably have heard of Shopify. You may have even heard of Magento. Now Magento is very custom. It's built using the PHP Zend framework. Shopify is more of an all-in-one solution. Uh, Big Commerce though, I found that to be a very strange beast. When I got offered the job, they asked me my experience and I said, look, to be honest, I don't know anything about big commerce. Uh, my preference is to do this with WooCommerce, but if you really want to stick with big commerce, I'll look into it and let you know. Now, you need to feel it out and feel if the client would really prefer to stick with the technology that they have. They're not always going to be open to using the tool that you have most experience in. They might want you for the job, but they might not really want you to use your particular tool. They, they get, they, they know what they know. They're comfortable with what they're familiar with. So fair dues they're going to want to stick with what they have. And so if you, I found it more beneficial to build my network and because here's the thing, someone approaches you with an e-commerce store, you don't know that they're not sitting on 10 other stores. So one client can keep you very, very busy for a very, very long time. So I persevered. I looked into big commerce, swatted up, found out what I could find out, realized it was built, you, it uses a templating engine called Handlebars, I read some of the documentation. But here's where my WordPress experience put me in good stead. I already knew what I was looking for. The job was to fix something wrong with the header, and if I could do that, it would lead to a bigger job. So when I logged in there, I knew straight away I'm looking for something along the lines of header.php because that's what WordPress uses. Now what do WooCommerce, BigCommerce and Shopify, what do they all have in common? They're all CMSs, they're all content management systems. So having that experience in WordPress, seeing as it is a content, content management system, I knew in a roundabout way what I was dealing with when it came to big commerce. So here's the thing, that client, it turned out they had other e-commerce stores and they shot me an email one night and uh, they had this store on a completely other platform. I don't know what platform it is actually, but they wanted to migrate it to Shopify. And again, I said, Look, I, I don't know about Shopify. There was a certain functionality in this store that doesn't exist in Shopify. So they needed someone to make a custom built plugin and they wanted to work with me. So now here's the thing. 
I wasn't at all confident that I could pull it off. I looked into Shopify and I found out it was it's built on Ruby and it uses something called Liquid. And when I saw that I thought, Li Liquid? Ruby? Nah, I don't, I don't think this is the project for me, but I knew it could lead to something even bigger if I can develop a strong relationship with this client. So I allowed myself the time. You see, I always, I pride myself on getting back to emails very, very quickly. But this time I allowed myself to sleep on it. I figured, look, don't put yourself forward for it now. Sleep on it, see what you think about it in the morning. And here's what I came up with. I said to him, I said, look, it seems to me that Shopify is a very big player in the e-commerce world. And as a developer, I don't think I'm gonna be able to avoid it for much longer. I'm gonna have to learn it at some point. So how about we do this? If you've got the time scale for it, how about I go away, I learn Shopify for five weeks and I build a prototype of the plugin and if I can show you the prototype and you're happy with it and you still want to go ahead with the migration so I'm taking on the risk I'm not gonna hold him to his word if he gets back to me and says we're gonna go with another option if you still want to go ahead then we'll discuss the terms and he said look Mike uh, we don't have a pressing time scale. We would much rather work with you because I did a good job on the last one. Always do a very good job. And so I went away. And it turns out when you've got a solid foundation, your CSS is down, your HTML is down. Maybe you've got experience with WordPress templating. Then you'd be surprised what you can do in five weeks when you dedicate your mornings and evenings. So I went away and learned it. I got this book. I actually found this guy, Gavin Ballard, on Skillshare. He's got some courses. There was another Skillshare course though that I found. Our links are in the description. I actually wish I'd have got the digital version of this book. I do like to get away from the laptop, but it's an actual course. When you're trying to do a course, it's much better to have the digital version and you can have the digital version alongside your text editor and, and what have you. So, yeah, I, I got the job. Another thing that I helped to sway it in my favour when I showed him the prototype, because the prototype, it was, it worked, but the UI, it was... Uh, it was, it was crap. So I mocked up uh, some, um, uh, showed them, you know, this is how it could look. And that was the skills I'd learned from Mike Locke all those years ago. It's almost four years ago now. So when you're thinking to yourself, oh, should I be learning this? Is it, am I ever going to use this? Is it going to come handy? Again, even though I've spread myself really thin, my, this, what I learned from Mike Locke still helping me to this day so I can pull a lot out of the bag. But I know I'm reaching for that feeling of craftsmanship and mastery. So yeah, I still wouldn't advise you to spread yourself thin. Do you know what I mean? Okay. I would still advise anyone to uh, master something. So what I'm basically saying is don't be so quick to talk yourself out of a job. Okay, allow yourself time to sit with it, do a little bit of research. You'll be surprised how comfortable you start to feel about taking on the job once you know a little bit more about what you're dealing with, okay? So do your research. I'm not saying just blindly put yourself forward for whatever comes your way. You know, if you don't feel 100%, you don't want to walk into, you don't want to begin a project not knowing whether you can actually do it or not, okay? The solution I came up with was to buy myself a little bit of time by saying, hey, you know, let me see if I can build this and I'll present it to you. If you like what I've done, then we'll discuss the terms of the project. So that was basically it. Now, a Magento project came knocking on the door 
and I turned it down. You see, the thing with Magento is from what I knew about it, I wasn't confident that I could swap up on the PHP Zend framework in the same amount of time that as I could get to grips with Shopify. You see, Shopify, you get a lot out of the box right away. But with Magento, it's a whole different kettle of fish. So that one passed me by. The agency that offered it to me, they've said, look, Mike, if you can get up to speed, we will offer you more Magento projects in the future. So I don't know if there could be more Magento work. Well, here's the thing. I ask myself the question, do I really want to learn PHP or do I want to learn something like Node.js? And so, because I think Node.js is the future. That's my opinion. I looked into it and there are some e-commerce platforms built on Node.js, which isn't surprising, but they're not yet the real go-to solutions as far as I can tell, because the legacy solution, LAMP, Linux, MySQL, PHP, Apache, that is tried and tested and true. It's solid, okay? But that being said, I still think Node.js is the future and I wanna learn full stack JavaScript. So Magento hasn't come up since. There you have it. So keep that in mind in the beginning. If you, this is more geared towards freelancers actually. When a client comes on the scene, maybe it's a business, you don't know who they can put you in touch with, okay? So don't see it, even though you've not got many clients knocking on your door, don't see it as the big payoff. It's okay to work within the budget if you have to. There's most likely gonna be more work that will come from it, and I made that mistake. I was having discussions with this company, and I looked them up, they were, uh, 100 plus employee company. And the, this word, uh, costs, and it, it was, <laughs> it should have become clear to me that they were very conscious of costs. And I came in too high, I lost the project, and I didn't develop that relationship. So that was the other thing I wanted to put across in this video. So yeah, themes. You know, this is the definitive guide to Shopify themes. So I am tempted. I know that there's potentially a lot of work I could get uh, from learning theme development. Whether I do that with WordPress or not, I don't know. I don't want to start to ramble. I hope you got something out of this video. I'll leave it there. No doubt I will have forgot something. Leave any comments you have below. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Hey, before you go, if you're a beginner wanting to learn web development, then let me tell you about Team Treehouse. For $25 per month, you're going to get access to all of these tracks, full stack JavaScript, web design, front end web development. They've got the lot, C Sharp, PHP, WordPress, you name it. Uh, I'm an affiliate, so I've left a link in the video description. If you do decide to sign up, I'll receive a little kickback. So thank you for that. It supports what I do over here on uh, YouTube. But don't just take my word for it. Go check it out. There's a free trial. Um, it's my go-to place for learning JavaScript. Even recently, actually, I was learning the new CSS grid layout from them. And you can always count on Team Treehouse to produce a uh, top, quality tutorials with quizzes, they've got a forum, there's always new stuff coming out. So thanks for supporting what I do and I'll catch you next time. Peace.